What's up guys? In this video, we're going to explore how to solve a system of equations by using the graphing method, the substitution method, as well as the elimination method. Hopefully after this video, you'll have a great understanding of how to solve a system of equations using either one of those methods. I hope you enjoy. Remember, we talked about two different ways to graphing lines. One, we talked about finding our x and y intercepts, especially when you have a problem that's in standard form. And then we also talked about putting it in y equals mx plus b form, our slope intercept form and graph it that way. Now, I will tell you, um, a lot of you, you know, when it's in standard form, you prefer to find the x and y intercepts. A lot of times, depending on the solution, uh, that might make it a little bit more difficult. So for solving systems, I am going to prefer to solve, set it into y equals mx plus b form. All right? And the reason why is I can follow the slope to every single point that's on the line, so the intersection should be a little bit more clear for me. Because remember, we want to find where these two lines intersect if they do at all. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up each equation, and I'm going to solve. And I'm going to solve for y, so it's going to be an mx plus b form. So to get y by itself, I first need to subtract 3x on both sides. So I get negative 2y equals a negative 3x plus 4. Right? We like to write the negative 3x instead of the 4. Then I need to divide by the negative 2. So I have y equals negative 3 divided by 2 is a positive 3 halves x. 4 divided by negative 2 is a minus 2. Now, a lot of you might say, ooh, fraction, I don't like it. But remember, this is our slope. So this is actually going to be very helpful when we go ahead and um, try to graph this line. So the next one, let's write we have 2x minus y equals 1. Now, I'm just going to get the y by itself, right? So I could subtract the 2x and then divide by negative 1. However, for this problem, I'm actually going to add the y to the other side. So I have 2x equals 1 plus y, and then I'll just subtract the 1. So my final answer is y equals 2x minus 1. So now, how do you graph, guys, how do you graph these two equations? Well, remember, your equations we're going to set up with an x and a y axis. All right. So remember, when it's in y equals mx plus b form, we put it in this form. So we could remember a couple of things. This is your y-intercept, right? And it's your y-intercept at 0, comma b. So I'm going to go down. So I look at here, and I say my y-intercept's at negative 2. That means this graph crosses at negative 2. So I go down to negative 2, and I make a nice little dot. Then it says my slope is going to be 3 over 2. And remember, because your m is your slope, Remember, slope we represent like as a rise over 1. It's the change in your x or change in your y values or the change in your x values. So I'm going to go up 3, 1, 2, 3, over 2. So that's going to take me to my next point. You could also do a negative or negative because that would still be positive. You could also go down 3, 1, 2, 3, to the left 2. And then I connect my two point or connect my points and I have my line. Make sure, ladies and gentlemen, I've seen a lot of people graphing. And they're not putting the arrows, right? When we're graphing lines, they have infinite length. So make sure you create those uh, arrows at the end. The next one, it says 2x minus 1. So now this one goes down at negative 1, right? So my, but my slope is a 2. Well, how do you do change in y over change of x? It's going to be your chain, um, you need to make sure you have to write this as a fraction. So actually, we're going to want to make sure we write as a fraction with 2 over 1. So therefore, I'm going to go up 2 over 1. And if I keep going like that, I notice that these aren't going to graph. However, if I go down 2 to the left one, we notice that they, if my graphs are a little bit OK, but we notice that they intersect at a certain point. So what was that point? That point was at negative 1, 2, 3 over 4. So we could say the solution is at the point of negative 1, comma, negative 3, because that is the intersection. All right. So then we look at our solution. Is it consistent or inconsistent? Since we have, um, since we have a solution, it is consistent. And then is it independent or dependent? Since we only have one solution, it is going to be an independent solution. So it's independent, consistent solution. And we can just write our solution as the coordinate point, because at that coordinate point, our two graphs are equal to each other for x and y. All right? 
So ladies and gentlemen, what we have here is um, we are going to solve the system by substitution. Now, this we could solve by graphing, right? It's the same thing. But rather than getting out graph paper and trying to do all the graphing method, we can also use an algebraic method. Okay. Now the important thing is still we're going to have our consistent, inconsistent solutions, dependent and independent. And I'll kind of talk about those. Um, I'll kind of talk about what those different solutions mean algebraically. But in the substitution method, we want to use a substitution method. The, e the best time to use substitution is when, you guys might want to write this down. I'm not going to write it down for time purposes. But whenever you have a, a variable that is solved, or meaning anytime you have a coefficient for one of your variables, and that is either 1 or negative 1. So you guys can see right there, y has a coefficient of 1, right? So mentally in my brain, I'm going to want to use substitution. So anytime you have a variable that has a coefficient of 1 or negative 1, Lizzie, it is going to be beneficial for you to use substitution. Make sense? So how do we use substitution? And why is it important when, it has, when, it's, when we have a coefficient of 1? The reason being is because the, whatever variable has a coefficient of 1 or negative 1, and even if you have two of them, just pick which one you want to solve for. But this is the only variable that has a coefficient of 1, correct? So what I'm going to do is I am going to solve for that variable. Because when it has a coefficient of 1, I don't need to undo multiplication or division, right? I just need to undo addition or subtraction. So I'm going to subtract a 2x from both sides. Therefore, now I have y equals negative 2x plus 4. So now I'm just going to rewrite my system. It's 3x plus 5y equals 13. And then y equals negative 2x plus 4. So basically, when we're doing substitution, we want to be able to have it written with a variable isolated. All right? And it's, you can do this with, when it's not equal to 1. But then you'd have to multiply. Then you'd have to undo multiplication and division. So it's easiest when you have a variable that um, has a coefficient of one. So now, if you guys remember when we did functions, if I had f of x equals three x minus five, and I say find when x equals two, or I said they would say f of two. Now, what else did we do with what did we do with the two? You put it in for the x, right? So you did 3 times 2 minus 5. Because x was equal to 2. 2 was equal to x. You could replace them or substitute one for the other. Correct? Now we're doing something very, very similar. Now y is not equal to a number, but it's equal to an expression. But we can still substitute in that expression in for the variable. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to substitute in my expression in for y into the other equation. So I have 3x plus 5 times negative 2x plus 4. OK, Jade? You work, got it? You doing all right? You doing OK? OK. Does everybody see? Does everybody see what I did? This is the big step right there. Now, what, the reason why that's so important is because now I have created an equation that only has one variable, x. Yes, it has two of them, but I'm only dealing with x. I'm not dealing with x and y's. So now I can solve this. This is a multi-step equation. I can solve this. So I apply distributed property. So I have 3x minus 10x plus 20 equals 13. 3x minus 10x is negative 7x plus 20 equals 13. Subtract 20. Subtract 20. Negative 7x equals um, negative 7. Divide by negative 7. Divide by negative 7. x equals negative 1. Positive 1. Thank you. Ah. Negative 7 divided by negative 7 is positive 1. So does everybody see that? Now I know the value of x. But again, when we're solving, remember when we did the intersection? We had a x and y coordinate where they intersected, right? So we had x was equal to y. So now, I'm going to take my value of x and plug it in for x. So I have y equals negative 2 times 1 plus 4. So y equals negative 2 plus 4. y is equal to 2. So now, I know the value of y, and I know the value of x. Now, on an equation, if you were to think about this graphically, if we know the x and the y coordinate, that represents where they intersect, right? So then what kind of solution? Is this consistent or inconsistent? Consistent, 
right? And they're going to intersect at the coordinate point 1, 2. So it's a consistent, independent system, right? Because they only intersect at one point. You guys can see that I do not have any, co any variable that has a coefficient of 1, correct? Correct? None of them have a coefficient of 1. So substitution, you can still do substitution, but it wouldn't really be fun because then you'd have to solve for a y or an x. And if you guys kind of visually do that in your head, you guys just kind of, I'll go over this again with you. If you guys kind of visually do that in your head, you can see you're going to have some fractions. And that's probably not going to be much fun to be working on. So the other method, which we call, is elimination. And using elimination, what we're going to do is add or subtract, add or subtract our equations to eliminate one of the variables. So if you look at this, if I add or subtract these equations, if I add these equations, am I, may, when we say eliminate, we want to get 0 as a coefficient, right? So if I add these, do I get 0 as a coefficient? If I subtract these two equations, do I get 0 as a coefficient for any variable? No. Sometimes that's going to work. But in this case, that does not work. So therefore, I need to go to the next step, which is the hardest one. I need to find, I need to find the common denominator, or I'm sorry, the common multiple of 3 and 2 or 4 and 3. Now it's a toss up. Again, you can solve for x first or you can solve for y first. So, okay, what would you like to solve for, x or for y? All right, so to solve for y, we have 4 and 3. What is a common multiple of 4 and 3? What is the smallest number that they both divide into? 12. All right, would you like to add or would you like to subtract the equations? Okay, so there's, there's different ways to do this. So he says to get these, they add 12. These both multiply or divide into 12, correct? So what I need to do is I need to multiply them both so they'll be 12. So here, I'd have to multiply that by 4. Here, I'd have to multiply that by 3. Now, K did say he wanted to add, which I prefer adding. I don't like subtracting. Subtracting, I think, makes um, mistakes. So if I'm going to add them, if I have 12Y plus 12Y, that's going to give me 24Y, right? So therefore, I need to make one of them negative. Don't matter which one. You just need to make, when you're adding, you've got to make sure one's positive, one's negative. All right, so now let's go and do the math. Remember, when you're multiplying, you've got to multiply everything. So this is 9x plus 12y equals 30. Um, this becomes negative 8x minus 12y, negative 28. Now, I add them. Right? And I can add them because you can see these are exactly the same. One's positive, one's negative. So therefore, 9 plus 8x is just going to be x. That goes to 0y, which is just 0, is equal to 2. So now I got my answer. Okay? Now we know what x is. Now we need to figure out what y is. But the problem, you remember in substitution how nice it was to have y solved, right? to plug the other one in? Here, we don't have one solved, so we just have to pick an equation. So Jeremy, which equation, the top one or the bottom one? Top one. Doesn't, doesn't matter. Pick whatever one. And you could use that one, or you could use that one, but obviously, these are smaller numbers. So I'm going to say 3x plus 4y equals 10. I know what x is. 3 times 2 plus 4y equals 10. 6 plus 4y equals 10. Subtract 6, subtract 6, 4y equals 4. Divide by 4, divide by 4, y equals 1. So again, ladies and gentlemen, we have a coordinate point of 2, comma 1. Okay?